For this video, I wanted to discuss something that really kind of weighed heavily on me uh, at the very beginning of the build, right after we bought this bus. I'm kind of realizing that Tiffany's the fun one, showing the design of the bus itself, and I'm the one coming in with all of the reality checks. That's important too, though, right? So one of the things that we struggled with initially was, I mean, just getting legal in general. Driving this big thing around and not getting pulled over and, you know, getting a huge fine or going to jail. Normally we try to keep videos pretty short, but this is a complex issue, and so we want to give it the attention that it really deserves. So this is going to be part one of a yet-to-be-determined uh, multi-part video. So sit back, relax, fast forward if you want to, and enjoy. Purchasing the bus is just one step. After that, there's a lot of other hurdles that actually have nothing to do with the build itself. It is a process to get a commercial vehicle, retitle it into a private recreational vehicle. Just to kind of give you an idea of what that looked like for us, it took us 10 months from the time we bought the bus to the time that we got a Colorado license plate. Now, there wasn't necessarily like a mad dash to go do that, but it was something that we were thinking about that entire time, and, and it took us that long. So the process to retitle the bus as a private vehicle is different in every state. And what was true for us may not be true for you. For instance, some states will allow you to keep the bus yellow, while other states will require you to paint it straight away. Even in some states, different counties within that state will have different rules. So you have to do your own research and make sure that you, you call the necessary parties and know what you're getting into. We aren't experts in any field regarding this process. So we're really recounting what we did for purely informational purposes. So throughout this whole process, we wanted to make sure that we did things the legal way. And that's not necessarily always going to be the fastest. There are a few loopholes that allow you to get a technically legal title without ever leaving your home, if you're okay with stretching the truth a little bit. We know people who have done this, and it's worked out great for them. We didn't want to go that route. We're converting in a residential area. We wanted to be able to defend ourselves at every juncture if somebody came up and started crying foul, which actually paid off really quickly because our next door neighbor calls the cops and fire department on us whenever he wants to. You're the biggest liar I've ever heard of. I mean, think about it, you know, we're converting a school bus into a tiny house in a residential area. There's a likelihood that we're going to ruffle some feathers along the way. You're the biggest liar I've ever heard of. And, and we certainly have, well, really just one person's feathers. You're the biggest liar I've ever heard of. But still, it, it causes an issue, and we wanted to make sure we were able to defend ourselves at every juncture. First thing was first, after we bought the bus, we actually had to, you know, drive it back to the house, legally. At that point, you know, we didn't have insurance or any of the necessary things to drive a vehicle like this from point A to point B. I've read some posts online about people saying that they just drive across state lines after they bought the bus without having any sort of insurance and just sort of cross their fingers. That sounds like a terrible idea to me. If you did that, that's, that's cool, but I, I would rather and, and recommend to other people having that safety net because otherwise it's a huge and unnecessary dangerous risk. Getting insurance for a single trip wasn't that difficult. I got a temporary commercial policy that allowed me to take it just a few miles from Denver back up here to Longmont. It was pretty easy to do. Uh, I just called a few local uh, businesses and they were able to write me in policy. So the least you can do is call around and see what's available. So temp tags are another issue. If we had bought from a dealership, we'd probably have some temp tags that we can use to get the bus home, but this time around we didn't. We bought at an auction from a school district. When, and when we bought the bus, we really didn't have, I mean, we were in such a daze, we didn't even think about temp tags. Drove it home, <laughs> got into the driveway, looked around like, wait a second, what, what did we just do? And it turns out that the, the school district never took off their license plate. Right after we realized that they hadn't removed it, we took it off and went to the DMV to get a temp tag. So a lot of the resources we found as far as getting your bus titled as a motorhome suggested that you say the bare minimum and sort of not exactly mislead the title office, but uh, you know, be careful with what you say and how you say it or else X will happen or something. I, I didn't feel that way. I wanted to just go and say straight up, this is what we're looking to do. How can we do it? Because it's not illegal. To my surprise, the clerk behind the desk said, oh yeah, this is this will be a pretty easy process. And she gave us a list of requirements that we needed. Literally, it was on a piece of paper, handed it to us, highlighted the things that we needed and said, here you go. 
bring these things back and we'll get you a, a license plate. As far as getting the temp tag itself, uh, we basically just said, look, we just bought this vehicle. Uh, we're looking to convert it into a motorhome. It is no longer a commercial vehicle and it will not be used at all for any commercial purposes. During this process, we need a temporary tag. How do we go about getting it? She basically said that we had done the things that we had needed to already. Uh, she handed us a temp tag and we were off. For where we are, uh, we needed to have four out of six items uh, in the bus itself permanently installed. Uh, cooking and food prep, uh, refrigerator and ice box, self-contained toilet, septic, uh, heating and air conditioning, potable water supply, including a faucet and sink, uh, separate 110 or 125 volt electrical power supply and or LP gas supply. And that was it. Those were the six items and we just needed four of those six permanently installed. Uh, and then we will have satisfied those requirements or that, that step to title the the bus as a motorhome. After those items, we then needed a certified weight slip, we needed a VIN verification, an emissions check, and proof of insurance. In the next video, we'll get into a lot of the specifics, uh, how we handled each item, what we needed to get insurance, a few other details that, that hopefully you'll find helpful. So thanks for watching, appreciate it, and we'll see you next video.